ever been tasked to build a report, but then had to spend hours exploring the mess of data to just realize the requirements? It's a common headache for most businesses that do not use the data model for business reporting. Or maybe you are just looking to figure out whether you need to build a data model for your business data and just searching for what that is and how you can get one. In any case, you are in the right place. Hey there, I'm Yevgen from OAX. On this channel, we speak all things about analytics, data, reporting, spreadsheets and warehouses and all sorts of data manipulation. In this video, I'm going to unpack what data modeling is and how every business can benefit from it. We'll see how it's like the architect's plan for a city, but for your data. I'm going to lay down how you can create a solid framework that helps organize, manage, report on and basically make sense of data so that you and your company can answer business questions faster and always based on data. So, if that's what you want to hear about, what you're all in for, stay with me. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel and enable notifications so you don't miss any of the 12 videos I have already planned and much more to come later. To talk about data modeling and its role in business reporting in 2025 and beyond. Imagine you're a city planner, an architect. Before any building goes up, you need a blueprint, not just for individual buildings, but for the entire layout of the city. This blueprint will guide where each building goes, how the roads connect them and ensure that all utilities are properly set up. This is exactly what data modeling does in the world of reporting, database design and data management. And no matter how tall the building is, the number of windows, the number of elevators, that doesn't influence the buildings around and the whole city. Ok, so what is data modeling? Data modeling is like creating a detailed map for storing, managing and utilizing data within a database. And modeling could be used just for reporting or just for storing the data. But we'll talk about that in a little bit later. So, when you model data, you organize the data in a way that makes it easier to retrieve, manage and use. Just as a city blueprint guides the placement of buildings, parks and roads, data modeling guides how your data is organized into tables or data marts, defines what each table stores, what the real names of the objects inside and how these tables or data marts relate to each other. So, Basically, there are three things to talk about here – entities, attributes and relationships. Let's start with entities, aka objects. Think of entities as buildings in our city. Each building represents a different type of data. For instance, one building might be a library, storing financial books, another one a grocery store, storing product items, orders, etc., and yet another, let's say a museum storing data on marketing and sales. In data terms, an entity is a collection of related data stored as a table in a database. Or that's not a table, it's a data model that refers to some of the tables. Next comes attributes, aka fields. Each building has different features that define it. A library might have attributes like the number of books, types of books and hours of operation. Similarly, a grocery store has attributes like types of products sold, prices, categories, brands, etc. Attributes are the individual pieces of information that describe each aspect of an entity. In a column-oriented database, like inside a data warehouse, these are the columns of a table. Next, relationships or joint keys. Just as rows connect buildings in a city, relationships connect entities in a database. A road might connect the library to the school, allowing students easy access to books. In a database, a relationship might connect customer data to their order details, showing what each customer wants. Relationships are the links between tables that help us understand how data in one table relates to data in another. These are crucial for querying and reporting as they allow us to combine data from different parts of the database efficiently together and 
use that in the same report. Now that we've laid down the foundation by explaining what data modeling is, let's dive into why it's absolutely crucial today in the world of business reporting. Think of data modeling as the backbone of your reporting system. Without it, the body of your business intelligence efforts would struggle to stand. Why? Because every time you need to build a report, you will need to keep the context in your head. Where is the data coming from? How it's stored? Where to get the specific data point and how to query it from a large table? What is the correlation between those objects? And what are the join keys? Nobody can really keep that in mind. And nobody has to. Picture this. The companies collect data much faster than they grow revenue. So, the more of the private context you put into a data model, the more reports you'd be able to produce to enable, to empower your team to do that themselves, and the more business questions are going to be answered when more of the business data would be utilized for good. So yes, let's quickly talk about the whys, about what data modeling really helps businesses to achieve. Number one, self-service analytics. Look, in today's fast-paced business environment, agility is a key. Data shouldn't be hidden by the data teams. We envision every decision maker to get timely access to corporate data, no matter how deep they are stored inside the warehouse. Even basic data modeling empowers self-service analytics by providing business users with accessible, understandable data structures while analysts and engineers keep the full control over the data points, data marts, join keys, etc. So, when done right, data modeling enables non-technical users to generate reports, visualize data, and gain insights without constantly relying on IT or data teams. It democratizes data, giving power to the end users who need to make those informed decisions and answer their questions swiftly. Next, data modeling improves data quality. Just as a well-planned city ensures all utilities are laid out effectively and reliably, a well-designed data model improves the quality of your data. How? Well, by establishing clear rules and relationships, data modeling helps in identifying and correcting inconsistencies. This ensures that the data used for making business decisions, even if it's just a subset of a database, is accurate, reliable, and trustworthy. Number 3. Data model defines the rules that keep data consistent, like setting up primary keys to avoid duplicate records and foreign keys to ensure that relationships are maintained correctly. This structural integrity is so crucial for reporting accuracy and overall operational efficiency. And as I mentioned, if done right, data modeling organizes data in such a way that it's easier to access and manipulate. This structure reduces the time needed to query data and generate reports, which means that business questions can be answered quicker. Faster responses lead to quicker decisions, keeping your business agile in responding to market changes or internal demands. A well-organized data model acts like a well-planned city map that guides users directly to the information that need without unnecessary detours. By logically organizing data, Models ensure that reports, dashboards, and analytics tools can easily access and query the necessary data. This not only speeds up the reporting process, but also enhances the user experience no matter that's a data analyst, data engineer, or a business user. All right, now let's take a closer look at the various types of data models. You might find literally tens of them online, but let me just go through the main ones here in this video and I'll definitely cover the rest of in the following materials here or on the OVAX website. So, make sure you subscribe to this channel and don't miss any of the following videos here on the topic of data model. Each so, type of data model represents a different stage in the process of structuring your database, much like layers in the cake or steps in building a city or a house. First comes conceptual data models. Think of it as a sketch of a house. It's the most abstract level where you outline the high-level structure of the business without going into details. This model is 
about the broad overview of business objects and how they interrelate with one another. It's like drawing the rooms of our house without specifying what type of screws will hold the cabinets in the kitchen. In the context of data models, it represents entities, which can be thought of as the rooms or functions in our building, and the relationships between them. It's aimed at capturing the fundamental structures and is often used to communicate the big picture to stakeholders and provide a clear sense of the scope of the system. Next, we dive a bit deeper into logical data models. This is where we decide what type of materials we are going to use for our house and maybe start talking about where the electrical and plumbing will go. The logical data model provides more detail than the conceptual model and is independent of the actual database systems. This is very important. It includes all entities and relationships from the previous conceptual model, but also adds the key attributes and defines primary keys that establish how tables, not only objects, connect and interact. It's here that you begin to see the blueprint become more detailed, preparing for actual construction, which aligns closely with database design but remains agnostic to the specific technology that will implement that model or the reports after that. Now, physical data models. We are down to picking out the fixtures and finishes. The physical data model is like the final architectural blueprint for building the house. It details exactly how to construct the database at the technical level. This model includes all tables, columns, relationships, and also database-specific features like indexes, keys, constraints, and all of the field descriptions. It's also tailored to the specific technology that will be used to store, manage, and report on that data, such as your database, like MySQL, data warehouses like BigQuery or Snowflake, or the reporting tool, like Allox BI. And when talking about specific architectural concepts within data model, especially for reporting or warehousing purposes, we often discuss the star schema and snowflake schema. These are particular types of logical or physical models optimized for querying data. Let's start with the star schema. Imagine a simple house where every extra room directly connects to the central room without any corridors. This structure simplifies querying because there is a single join path to each piece of data, just one. Now, snowflake schema. Imagine there are corridors connecting the rooms. This is more normalized but can be slightly more complex because it requires multiple join paths to query data, which might be a bit slow down your query performance, but it really improves the data organization and reduces redundancy. Again. We'll dive deeper into each of those schemas in the future videos, exploring when and why you might choose one over another one based on your specific business or reporting needs. In 2025, the contrast between traditional and modern data modeling techniques highlight a shift towards more dynamic and flexible approaches. So, let's briefly discuss the difference and the vision around the impact on business reporting. Traditionally, like 70 years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, data modeling was used as data architecture to establish rigid structures suited to transactional systems, which are great for environments with stable, predictable data types and relationships. However, as data volume grows, variety, velocity, several data sources, they all have exploded thanks to big data and the role of data these traditional methods often fall short. Modern data modeling techniques are more flexible and adaptable, making them ideal for businesses today. So, one of them is the dimensional data modeling. It organizes data into fact and dimensional tables, which simplifies data retrieval for business intelligence and reporting. Fact tables store quantitative data, like sales figures, while dimension tables store contextual information, like time, and geography. This model type is highly effective for handling large volumes of data quickly and supporting complex queries without impacting performance. Graph data modeling, on the other hand, uses nodes and edges to represent and store data. Nodes represent entities like customers or products, and edges represent the relationships between them, like purchases. 
This approach excels in scenarios where relationships need to be effectively explored and analyzed, such as social networks, recommendation systems, and complex supply chains. These modern techniques are essential for businesses that deal with a lot of data, literally any business now deal with a lot of data, and require flexible, efficient systems to derive meaningful insights to answer questions and act upon those answers. In order to illustrate how data modeling works in real-world applications, consider a retail company that needs to report on inventory and customer service. A large retail chain could use data modeling to better understand its inventory levels across various locations almost in real time. So, by modeling data with dimensions for products, time, store locations and facts about sales and stock levels, the company can quickly generate reports that show which products are underperforming or out of stock. These insights allow for timely reordering and redistribution of inventory, ensuring that popular items are always available to meet customer demand. These types of data modeling not only streamlines inventory management, but also increases revenue by making more of the goods available at more locations and reducing out-of-stock incidents. Additionally, this kind of data modeling can evolve as new product lines are introduced or as new ones or new stores are opened, because you basically don't make any changes to the model, just add new data into the tables. And there we have it. Today, we've dived into the world of data modeling, exploring its various types and techniques and how they play a crucial role in the modern data-driven business landscape. Look, data modeling is not just a modern technical necessity. It's a strategic asset that empowers everyone inside the organization to build more reports, to answer their questions, to utilize more of the data points, especially those long-tailed ones that never got to the business reports. And finally, harness the full potential of business data for making data-informed decisions. From ensuring enhancing business intelligence and enabling self-service analytics, Data modeling shapes the foundation on which businesses build their competitive edge. Data, now more important than ever. By representing data in a structured, easily navigatable view or a map, both businesses and data teams can quickly adapt to changes, uncover patterns from their data, and drive business growth. As you've seen through an example I've shared, the retail chain inventory management, Effective data modeling can transform how a business operates, making data a pivotal element in operational efficiency. Now, I encourage you to think about how data modeling can be applied to your business, whether you are a part of a small startup or a large corporation. The principles of data modeling are applicable and can elevate the way your business interacts with data. If you found this video helpful and you're curious to dive deeper into the world of data analytics, Check out the resources linked in the description down below. There might be a free data modeling tool with a bunch of templates available for you, absolutely for free, and somewhere in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please don't forget to give me the thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel for videos like this one, and hit that notification bell right below to stay updated on our latest videos. Thanks for joining me here today. I'm Yevgen from OVAX and please remember, every data point, every model and every report is the step towards smarter, more effective business. Oh, one more thing. Your engagement is that thing that drives me, our content, so please leave your comments, questions or suggestions down below. Let's make your data work for you and until next time, keep exploring your data, stay curious and as always, happy analyzing.